Well, you know, I think when we talk about why we wanted to learn to meditate, we have kind of a tendency to look at the life we were living and think, well, that wasn't so good. I had some problems there. What else can I do? Or, you know, maybe we've had spiritual experiences throughout our childhood years. I know that a number of us have, and that would be true for me also. So when I think about why I meditate and why it would be good for other people to meditate, I think about a story that we kind of like to use to explain, and that is if you think about a window and the window is covered with dirt, but outside is this beautiful sunlight. And so the object of meditation then is to clean off that dirt so that the beautiful sunlight shines through. And of course, what that is, it's the light of pure being, the light of divinity, the, the light of the heart, whatever word you want to use for it. So we meditate because we want to live in that being and live, we are that being, and we want to have the awareness of that and we want to live our lives from there. So that's why I learned to meditate. And it doesn't mean that everything's gonna be smooth from there on, not necessarily. Meditation is walking the razor's edge. It's the path of heroes. So it doesn't mean that just because we learn to meditate and have some experiences, everything's gonna be good from then on. We still have the work that we have to do to clarify, to lighten the dirt on the windows. But that's why I meditate and it's why I think it would be good for other people also. Well, meditation is not a religion, and, and actually what it does, what we do in, in our teachings, we take, we look at all of the major religions in history, and we take out what is the kernel of truth. And of course, the kernel of truth has to do with the divine in all of us. It has to do with the fact that we we are all a spark of that divine energy. And so that's the truth. We are all, all, all of us have that spark of divinity within our heart. That is the heart. And we all want to open to that. So it's not a religious teaching. It just simply has to do with finding that divine spark that lives in all of us and in all things. Um, it's not a belief, it's an experience. And so what you believe um, of, about religion, what religion you believe in really doesn't matter in being. So that's what we teach, that's what we stand for. And that's, so that's why it's not a particular religion. It's just that essence, the essence of the heart if, if divinity is a problem, then think of the essence of the heart. Think of love, think of grace. All of those are kind of words for the same thing. So at one, it has to do with finding the oneness in humanity, the oneness in all of us. And it's not tied to any particular religion. Well, anybody, anybody can benefit um, we often find that people benefit relatively quickly because you start quieting the mind. And as you do that, there are many benefits that people experience relatively quickly. So n no, there's, there's nothing in particular that anyone needs to do in order to meditate. I mean, you need to show up with a good quality teacher and a good class but you just show up with the state of readiness and that's all you really need to do. <laughs> no, that's one of the nice things about working with us. Um, we are a meditation group for householders and that means we get up and we raise kids and pay bills and do all of the things that people out in the world do. 
So no. And also, you know, that spiritual energy is much more powerful than the physical energy. It, it can come through whether we've exercised, whether we've dieted, it doesn't matter. That energy still comes through. So no, we don't have any requirements like that. It's not hard to learn. The techniques are simple. And we have very practical philosophy that we teach along with the practices. So no, it isn't hard to learn. However, it does require some discipline to continue with it because, you know, we recommend, for example, that people meditate twice a day for 20 minutes twice a day. And, you know, people in America today, things are either like, I can't afford it, or I don't have time for it. And so um, one of the greatest practices we have is realizing that, yes, you do have time for it. And that's one of the greatest disciplines that we face. So we offer techniques and we offer teachings that connect us to source, to spirit, to grace, to the heart. Whatever word you want to put on it, they're all kind of saying the same thing. It has to do with that divine spark, that connection to source. And so that's what we're offering. Our life improves. It's something we want to do. We look forward to it because we see our attitudes changing. We see situations around us changing. We see our perspective on life changing. But mostly it's about love. It's about love. And it's loving other people, but it's also loving ourselves, loving others, and loving life itself. What is important is to remember that the purpose of our teachings, the purpose of our, the purpose of everything that we do has to do with that connection, with unfolding the heart, that connection to grace, that connection to source. So the only comparison is that that's what we're all about and that is why people come to us. Like who am I is the greatest question that we can even ask ourselves and certainly our practices and our teachings, the body of teachings themselves go to teach us that, to show us that, to have us live that. Um, the nature of God, the nature of why are we here, the nature of life, yes. And those are, those are the philosophical teachings that we have at our disposal. And that's actually our intent is to help people answer those questions. So yes, it's pretty typically done over a period of eight weeks. You'll meet with a teacher and a class of, of some number. Usually we keep it fairly small because we want things to be as individualized as possible. In the classes, we get into the philosophical, the spiritual, the psychological dimensions of uh, working with our life here as householders. Mm -hmm.